questions, uh, you will need to raise your hand once again, once we get started with Coach Day. I believe Coach is with us and uh, Coach, here, here you are right now. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. If you could start off with a brief opening statement, then we'll go ahead to the questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, John. Just uh, certainly excited. Everyone here is very, very excited uh, about the opportunity to play in the Sugar Bowl. It's, it's been a unique season uh, in so many different ways and um, to get an opportunity to get back into the playoff and, and play against Clemson is, is very, very exciting. Certainly have an unbelievable amount of respect for, for Dabo and uh, his program and what they've done, but, but how they do it. And, uh, he and his wife, Kathleen, have been, been really good to, to Nina and I. And so uh, looking forward to, to, um, to the opportunity to play. It's going to be a quick turnaround. Um, you know, we only have 11, you know, 12 days here to really get ready for this thing and Christmas is in between. So um, unique challenge. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Coach. Our first question is from Brendan Gulick. Brendan, please unmute before asking the question. Hi, hey, Coach. Congratulations on making the playoff. Thanks. Wanted to ask you uh, just point blank, do you think it should be a requirement that a team wins its conference championship in order to be included in the playoff? Well, I think it's 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 a two part question because the way it's it is right now, uh, I don't think that 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 makes any sense. Uh, the only way that that would work <clears throat> expanded uh, the playoff system. Um, I, I do think that's uh, the fairest way to or the most you know to to get that uh, accomplished is you win your conference and, and then you go play for um, play for the whole thing. But the way it's set up right now, that obviously doesn't doesn't matter. But I do think winning your conference um, is very significant. Our next question will come from Trevor Groves. Hi, Coach. Congratulations. Um, I, I don't know how much you've been able to see of Clemson this year, but obviously the uh, the, the thriller that you played against them in the semifinal last year, uh, how much of the, do, you, do you think of, of that team applies to, to their team this year? And um, I remember Coach Halfley saying after that game that uh, he was surprised at how athletic um, Trevor Lawrence was in the running game. Um, did, did that surprise you as well? And, and how well do you think he's running the ball right now compared to last year? Well, I think he and Etienne are, are two of the most dynamic players in college football and, and probably in the history of college football. And do I think that experience matters? Absolutely. I think that the fact that um, you know, a lot of those guys played in that game and having the experience of playing in that game uh, is critical. And, and I think that's uh, why those, you know, those, these Clemson teams have won so many games because they played in this environment before, uh, which you know, hopefully also plays in our favor is that we were there last year. And um, you know, we didn't, didn't come home with the win, but we, we gained some experience there. And hopefully that that pays off dividends. But in terms of Lawrence's ability to run, I mean, he he's very, very athletic. You know, and when they need him to run, uh, they're smart about how they do it. And um, and no, it, it didn't really you know surprise me all that much. I know that uh, he had a great day against us and, and opened up and ran away from some of our guys, which that was very impressive as well. But um, but, you know, very, very dynamic uh, offense. Next question will be from Nathan Baird. Hi, Ryan. Is, uh, I guess, first of all, any update uh, on Justin since yesterday? And then also, how do you, in general, balance things like rest and rehab uh, with such a short turnaround, especially considering all the other absences you have right now? Well, the good thing for us is that, um, you know, we've we haven't played in that many games so that, you know, it's um, we, we've been, you know, fairly healthy in terms of the physicality of it all. Where we've had a hard time is with people testing positive. And that's what's kind of made things difficult for us. Um, you know, hopefully get, we get some of those guys back. And, um, you know, Justin, uh, we'll be fine. Next up is Austin Ward. Hey, Ryan, I know um, Mick was talking in January about putting up the score from last year's game in the Fiesta Bowl. That was like, you know, get through workouts and motivation. How much did that continue? And, and how much did you guys were maybe hoping that this matchup would work out? And, you know, fresh off of that game, it was it was right on our minds and something that when we got back to work in one of workouts, January, February, I mean, it was it was right there for us. And, you know, coming off of that game, it just uh, we just didn't get over it in one day. I mean, that, that took time. But then as we got into spring ball, we started to move forward and then the quarantine happened. And the goal was to get back into the situation. And so, you know, we were in the same situation a year ago and we wanted once that game was over, we wanted to get back here. How we got back here is just amazing. 
I mean, the journey that we've gone on as a program to get back to right here, to have another chance to play Clemson in this game is like nothing we, no one, you can't even make it up. I mean, you know, some of the best storytellers in of all time couldn't come up with this story. But here we are. All that being said, here we are. So, you know, really just excited to get about preparing and doing a great job over the next, you know, I guess it's 11 or 12 days to go play our best game of the season, which we're going to need. We're going to have to play our best game to, to beat these guys. Next up will be Bill Rabinowitz from Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Ryan. Um, normally, six games into a season, you'd be in mid-October. You would only now kind of be getting a real sense of what your team is. Now you got to play a team that's played twice that many games, knows who they are. How much of a concern is that for you right now? I mean, it's a great question, but, I, you know, I don't know because it's never really been done before. So what does it really mean? I don't really know. I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, it's who executes better and plays tougher in the end. You know, when you play in big games, you have to execute at a high level. And that's really what it comes down to. Both teams are going to play hard. I mean, everything's on the line. It's who executes better is, is, is going to pull it out. So you know, we have to do that. And, you know, whether we've played, you know, six, eight, 10, or they've played 12, uh, I don't really know. I don't know what that really means. And so uh, we'll try not to focus on that. We'll try to just execute the best game we can possibly um, you know, do the best job we can on Saturday. Next up is Whitney Harding. Hey, Ryan, we all heard about um, the Big Ten making adjustments today to the COVID protocols. When did you find that out? And point blank, will Chris Olave be back for this game? Does the time frame work? Yeah, I think we have guys um, based on on when exactly that number is decided and, and put public. I don't I don't know exactly where that is in terms of being announced. I know it's something that the Big Ten uh, it's it's a protocol that is across all sports. So I know that um, you know it's something for the entire Big Ten, not just for us. And um, and so we'll just kind of wait to hear when that that goes public. I don't know if it has yet or not, but I know that they've they've made a decision to move it. And then we have some guys that are really close. You know, guys like Chris and Barron and some guys that, um, you know, we'll find out once we get the final word on that. I think we have time for two more. We'll start with Tony Gerdeman. Ryan, uh, so much has talked about Ohio State being at an advantage at only playing six games. What about it uh, has been a disadvantage? Like, would you rather have more games, obviously, under your belt? I, I, everyone has a different journey this year. I think that's what yeah. makes – this season so unique. And uh, I just think it's been as a football coach and, and someone who loves college football to see all these different teams and all these different young men who have overcome so much adversity and all their different, and everyone has a different story. And our stories to me is just simply amazing. We weren't even playing a season for a month. And then here we are right now. And, uh, you know, I think we have an opportunity to write one of the greatest stories in the history of college football. And uh, I don't know, I don't know what it all means. Um, you know, we certainly don't have the game reps, especially for some of the younger guys to find out what they can do. Um, and we, you know, haven't had our best game yet this year. Played some good games, but we haven't had our best game this year. And we're going to have to play our best game um, again to beat Clemson. Thank you, Coach. Our final question will come from Tim May. Thank you very much. Uh, Ryan, you, you dealt with COVID-19 yourself. Uh, Josh Myers was talking yesterday after the game about the just almost the agony of sitting there for 10 days, not being able to do anything, you know, <laughs> work out, et cetera. Uh, what was the challenge of bringing those, for example, offensive linemen back from that? And what will be the challenge facing these guys? If indeed you, indeed you do get them back like Chris and Barron, uh, of getting back into what you call game shape, uh, but you know, in, in these uh, ensuing days. Well, yeah, I mean, Josh, Nick, and Thayer, three of them going into the game yesterday had really played one game, I think, in about a month. And so the challenge is you just haven't played a lot of games during that time. Um, but then they played excellent. They, I mean, they, really, they graded out really high, played well. Um, it'll be the same for, for those those guys, Chris and, and Barron, and uh, you know a few of the other guys that, that are on that list. I mean, uh, we were down over 20 guys yesterday and two coaches. And so, again, I just I think back on, you know, how – our guys have overcome this and it'll just be another, another, um, you know, example of that, but um, they have to clear ca cardiac testing and make sure they clear all those protocols. And uh, we have a pretty good system in place for the skill guys 
for the linemen because it's very different. You know, the, the skill guys after that quarantine, they got to really make sure that, uh, you know, their soft tissue injuries are, are minimized and all those type of things where with the big guys is a little bit more pushing and pulling and different things. The specialists have their own set of stuff. So we put together a pretty good system that, that um, you know, Sean Barnhouse and Dr. Borchers and Mick Moratti have all done an excellent job of keeping an eye on so that you limit it. We have a percentage that uh, once they get back to work, they're allowed to do for that day. Then we shut them down until they build back into 100%. Thank you very much for your coach for your time here today, Coach. Uh, we'll be seeing you in uh, shortly, about 12 days, I guess. So good luck with your preparation and hope all everyone stays healthy. Okay, guys. Thanks so much. And for the media still on, uh, once again, you can go to allstatesugarbowl.org. You can find our media tab. We will have a transcript of today's call. Uh, we'll post that as soon as we can. That'll also be emailed around to the schools for distribution. And you can email me at johns at sugarbowl.org. And we will get anything we can out to you. We'll do our best to accommodate everything. But again, keep in mind COVID-19 is uh, causing quite a bit of differences for the media operation of the Sugar Bowl as well. So hopefully everyone stays uh, safe and healthy and has a chance to enjoy the holidays a bit. Thank you very much, y'all.